here's the next outlet and the wires coming out of the hole that I've already cut in. I didn't have the uh, single gang old work box when I started uh, cutting the holes and fishing the wires so I just kind of guesstimated on the size but I didn't want to go too big so that's the main thing. Um, I might be just enough wide but uh, I didn't know how tall I needed it to be. What I'm going to do is kind of tuck these wires into the wall if you have a, a problem and these wires are going to actually fall down into the wall, uh, don't do that. Try to do something different. But what I need to do is, is set this box on, on the wall and then I need to trim around the outside of it. And I measured, so these outlets are the same height on this wall, the quadruplex that I just installed and then this one here. So uh, I've, got a, I've got a Sharpie marker and I know that I need to be at the top of this hole right there and the the sides here uh, will be will be perfect but what I need to do is make sure the box is level so I'm just gonna put a torpedo level on the top here and that's gonna help me kinda make sure I, I get the box nice and level so there that is right there and I can remove the the torpedo level now and what I'll do is I'll come on the side here so you'll see this this raised part of the box you want to come from there down to the bottom of the box right there and then you'll see this cutout this window right here there's one on the bottom of the box here too so we're just going to mark underneath of that and I've got it lined up on this side here so I'm just going to mark mark on this this side of the box so now now that we have all that you can kind of see we've got a black line going down here along along this wall and then uh, we've got a, or a blue line and then we've got a blue line along the bottom here and here so this is paneling this is like uh, paper thin paneling that came with the mobile home and we're just gonna you know use that but I've found the best thing to use to cut the the paneling is is a utility knife now uh, if you've got one that that has the retractable blade at the top here they, they work okay sometimes the blade pulls out this is a fixed blade I've had this a long time a fixed blade a utility knife if you see the the bottom screws off and again this is a hide brand hyde and uh, I'll put some links to this down below so the blade does not pull out but it's it's fixed so it's not nearly as kind of safe because you still have to take that out so the best way like I said I've found to cut this paneling is actually with the utility knife and uh, I need to make this side a little bit wider so we're just going to do that you can see it just goes right on through there and then we're just going to shave off since I had it kind of close along the edge there so get down to there and then what we're going to do is come in from the bottom here pretty much where the line needs to be for the box and you can see when I stopped my marker I knew how far I needed to come down on there so that's right there and then to come across we're just going to start right there at that hole make multiple passes I'm just gonna come right through that line right there and then back this way like that and then down along this side here we're just gonna shave that off a little bit and score it since that's a little big we're just gonna score it there and when you get close to the edge I like to come backwards with it that way when the knife slips it'll just um, kind of go there so that's it right there that comes out nice and then looks like this corner up here needed to be cleaned up a little bit so we're just going to shave shave some off of that square that up a little bit so there now we have a hole the proper size for our old work box and I'm just going to go ahead and take this blade out of here so see how the handle folds over like that and then the, this blade just pops right out and then you can store it in the handle so that's kind of a nice option there and now it's safe again because it's no blade in there. So, first thing we need to do before we put the box in is grab our wire out of here. 
and I've got one looks like kind of coming in the top so we're gonna stuff that into the box there into the top and kind of have to fold it and bend it a little bit so that the wire sticks out of there and again we want six inches from this this edge at least and uh, so we'll pull that on through there that's about right and then we've got one that looks like it wants to kind of come into the bottom so we'll shove that one into that little flap right there start feeding it in and uh, this kind of takes a little hand strength so just take your time it's not a not a race or anything it's electrical work you want to take your time and enjoy it so then we now that we know our box is the, our hole is the right size for our box all we have to do is just slip it right in there and uh, looks like I'm a little tight along this edge along this top edge right here uh, but it should fit right in there just perfect and that's great so next up we're gonna go ahead and tighten up these screws here for uh, the wings that are on the back side of the old work box so the old see so you can see the these wings fold up as soon as you start turning the screw to lock the box in. There's one on the top, one on the bottom here. This is a two gang, but the single gang has the same thing. So I like to use a drill for that. So let me grab that. All right, so I've got my drill here. So this is a impact, uh, but it'll, it'll work just the same. So I got my number two Phillips in there and there's that screw right there. So you can see how that box sucked up against that wall and you don't want to go too far tightening these screws up because it's uh, just plastic, you know. The wing is just plastic, so let's get this one down here. There we go. So just a couple little clicks on the impact. You can do it with a screwdriver. It's no problem. Um, just that goes a little faster. So next up, we're going to use our. Uh, we've got you know two sets of wires here, and what we're going to do is get in here with our dikes and clip back some of that insulation this outer sheathing of the Romex and again this is 14 2 Romex if I, or 3 if I didn't mention it so that means it has three insulated conductors inside of this white sheathing on the outside and uh, back in the day if you didn't know this uh, Romex was not color coded if you go to the stores now any any of the stores even the supply houses and things uh, you'll notice that everything Romex related is color coded and uh, that was that was brought about in my career as an electrician uh, I forget exactly what year it was I want to say late 90s um, if I'm wrong correct me I'd love to uh, love some input on that uh, if you remember that if you don't remember that um, that's a little history for you. They used to all be white. Uh, in fact, I've got some 14 still that's white, uh, or some 12 still that is white. Uh, 10 used to be white and everything. So I was kind of, I guess, for the inspectors uh, to be able to easily determine if the installer had put in the the correct gauge wire or not so that's kind of neat a little neat history lesson for everyone I kind of pulled that out of the box when I yanked that sheath off so I'm gonna pull that little tab back and shove that sheathing back inside of the wall there a little bit so I don't have all that extra junk hanging around so be really careful sticking your your dikes in the box, trying that junk off because uh, you can nick some of the other wires inside of there. So, so all that's good. So we'll start with our grounds again. Always good to start with your grounds. See how these are two different lengths? I'm just going to take the longer one and just trim it off so it's nice and easy there. And um, and then you've got your wire that we saved from our other 
quadruplex over or the quadruplex over there the other outlet we just did and uh, we're just gonna put that on there get this started what's going on with this wire nut there we go and uh, get those good and tight yeah that wire nut does not feel like it's doing what it should be doing I'm gonna get a different one here oh there we go that started right on there something must be wrong with that spring or something you'll get that sometime so want to make our pigtail up just like that and let's do our neutrals we're here already so just like before we're just gonna trim those back like that we've got our neutral pigtail here so taking trim that back like uh like all the other ones we've just worked on pop that in here making sure all the ends are at the same distance oh, I bet that's that bad wire nut again good gravy there we go so I've got that one and we're just gonna cap these red ones off because we're not using them right now and uh, we can tie them together I guess that wouldn't hurt right thought about putting them together without with the insulation still on there but if somebody was troubleshooting or something maybe that would throw them off I don't know but we got that fine that's good black wires here same thing strip those back and we got our pigtail here these guys together looks like I got that one a little long I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna line up all the insulation like that and trim them all at the same time that way I know they're all the same length so if you do mess up like I did uh, you can go ahead and fix your mess up easily by just trimming them all off like that I've got that pigtail tightened up so next up is, this is going to be tight in here, but I think we'll be okay on our box fill. Um, just going to shove that back. I had to get the, kind of the, I forget what size cubic inch it is, but this shallower box because these walls are not very deep in the mobile home. So we're just going to take this and tuck that back there. Now you'll see, I used pigtails for this instead of just wiring wiring straight through the outlet and I uh, I'm going to show you the other way of doing it on the other outlet without pigtails so I just wanted to show you two ways of doing it and um, if you don't agree with something I've done or have a question about it please ask um, I might have done something wrong you know I'm not perfect uh, I am an electrician I've been doing electrical work a long time uh, but it's not what I do for a living anymore so if, if something's changed and you feel feel the need to uh, correct me by all means I would love to hear it so uh, we've got uh, the outlet here and we've got again our brass terminals on the right hand side facing the outlet and our silver terminals on the left hand side facing the outlet so uh, let's go ahead and uh, strip these we're gonna cut all these at the same length that's the first thing we're gonna do about six inches from the edge of the box so I had plenty extra to tuck up in there we're gonna strip these back just like the other outlet we're gonna put a little curly Q on here and have that ready this 14 bins easy So we'll start with our ground again. Pop that guy on there. And then we've got our screwdriver. Go ahead and tighten that down. And then we've got our, our outlet net neutral. There, so tighten that down. And then we've got our hot wire. Just like that. Here we go. So we got a little copper hanging down. 
a little copper hanging down you want to inspect everything make sure you got everything tightened up and then remember these screws here you want to go ahead and run those up so you don't have a bunch of extra screw head hanging out everywhere so once we got everything tightened up here we're going to go ahead and break off these little tabs on the outlet again because this is an old work box and you can see it's kind of kind of raised up off the wall and this will help the cover plate sit nice and flush with the uh, with the wall so we're just going to tuck these wires tuck these wires in there and it gets a little tight in there but just work with it a little bit and it'll be all right so we've got our drill out already with our Phillips head in there we can go ahead and just loosely put these in because they uh, again we're gonna leave that loose so we can go ahead and get the painting done in here and it'll look really nice when we get done so there's that one in and uh, I'll go show you where we tied into the uh, supply for all this circuit here here's the original outlet that I tied into on the back side of the wall and you can see I did the feed through method here with the original power coming in these screws here and then the output coming out of the bottom here and vice versa on the neutral but the ground does have to be pigtailed so you cannot put two wires underneath of one screw these outlets all have the stab lock in the back and I really don't like using the stab lock method um, I've had some problems with those in the past I don't find that they are reliable and uh, you know some of you might disagree which is fine and uh, some of you might agree which is fine uh, but from my experience I uh, found it better to either pigtail or to feed through the outlet just like this here and uh, that way uh, you're continuously carrying power now I have heard of some people saying that this is not an approved method um, uh, through here but if you think about it the outlet here on the bottom if you only had wires on the top the bottom of the outlet is able to carry 15 amps and that is provided through this tab right here so uh if if they're if if i've done something wrong again uh provide some code and let me know and i'll change it and uh that's not a problem if 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 i've if i am incorrect absolutely i would like to be corrected and uh and do this safely and properly and uh, so everybody else will know too that uh, that's the proper way so um so let's uh let's move on next to some more power some more outlet uh switch control and things like that and uh in the other the other part of the wall there where the switch for the light is here's the original switch that turned the light on and off in here I've got another light source going right now, but we're just going to check for power here. This is just a little, a little indicator. I have multimeters and things um, that that work very well, but uh, this this is a very simple method to test. And I've tested this on a known good circuit or a known circuit that has power on it. You can see there's no there's no power on either of these terminals. And here's the uh, here's the the outlet right here. And uh, we're just going to check across here, and that still has power. So uh, you can see we've got two separate circuits in here, and uh, so we're going to need to uh, make sure we uh, disconnect power to this one also while we are um, working on changing the switching and the, the way these outlets work here. So all we're going to do with this switch right here is actually just change it out and freshen it up and put a new switch in. Uh, the box is going to stay the same. <coughs> Excuse me. And the uh, the wiring is going to stay the same. But all we're going to do is just change out this this uh, device. And all I wanted to do to show you this was I was talking about the stab lock, and this is what they call stab lock or backstab or whatever um, wiring method. And all this is is the wire goes inside of here this is the wire and there's a little tab in there so when you push the wire in it just it grabs that tab like that and doesn't allow the wire to come back out but uh, I've actually had these just you can just pull them out where they don't actually work correctly um, but the way I like to get them out is I'll just take the the wire and just well there see that one just fell out 
uh, but the wire and just pull back on it and then twist the device back and forth there's a key some of them have this one does it has like you can put a screwdriver in there and release that little tab uh, but if you've got a device like this you just wiggle it back and forth if you can get a hold of the uh, copper and keep the keep the the wire from spinning inside of the installation well that one really wants to be in there and I need to save every bit of wire I can because the mobile home builders I won't call them electricians uh, decided to leave about two inches or maybe an inch of wire hanging out of the edge of the box you can see it right there so um, yeah that's kind of kind of wild so now that we've got that ground we can definitely twist this a lot more than it was and sometimes you can't see how to do a, a full 360 and now it finally came off so that's that's kind of how you have to do that and if I didn't cover this before uh, we want to make sure we have um, we don't have power on any of this here and we don't so I tested this before but I tested this light on a known a known hot circuit I don't know if you can see that uh, but you can see there that's that is on so we know that this device work or this tester works and none of these have power on them so we're good to go there so let's go ahead and get our new switch and get that installed so here's our new switch and uh, again we don't have a whole lot of wire to work with so I'm gonna try to pull some wire if I can if it's just barely hung up in there like the I can see the uh, not much yeah it's just that's just how much wire they gave me so I'm gonna have to work with that a little bit so what I'm gonna do is is try to put a little curly cue on here just on the very end not make it too too tight because uh, I mean it's gonna be hard 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 to wire this back in and again do not like using the uh, the stab lock so we're just gonna wire it up the same way it was the ground is gonna loop around here they gave you plenty of ground that's great it's nice of them so we're just gonna tighten that down around that screw because that was really loose and then uh, tighten this down remember the the way you loop the wire around is in the same direction as you tighten the screw so um, looks like this white wants to go on the bottom here so we'll put that on the bottom and uh, tighten that up and then the black looks like it just wants to go right there so we'll slide that in there and tighten that on down so that's it for this box uh, next up we're gonna work on this this outlet over here but uh, I'm just gonna lightly put these screws in here again because we are going to be painting um, but I did want to clean that up and show you how to do that so since this white wire wasn't marked uh, as being a switch leg code now requires some identification showing that the the white wire is actually carrying voltage so what I, I did is I just went in there with the uh, that blue sharpie marker and marked that uh, switch leg up uh, let's move over here to this outlet we're gonna go turn the power off to it and and check that out so I'm just gonna leave this this is nice because it doesn't take any batteries um, so to, you know and it, it just it's a simple device so all we're gonna do is just lay this in here and I'm gonna go find the breaker we're gonna clip that onto the uh, there we go onto the original outlet there and hopefully have it turned on so you can see that there we go so now I'm gonna go turn the power off and uh, work on this outlet you can see the power is off so that's good we're just gonna double check on these terminals here uh, let's see here like that and put that on there and that on there we're good it's it's off so we're good all right so we'll try to go ahead and pop this device off I was going to actually 
uh, used this wire for something else but ended up not needing it so while I had the wall apart I went ahead and and fished this wire into the next uh, outlet just in case uh, I was going to need a switch leg for something but I don't so it's okay I'm just going to tuck this back in the box and we just won't need it so first thing we're going to do is uh, remove this the idea behind this whole process is I'm actually going to put in a, a quadruplex you know double gang box and two duplex outlets so uh, this is how to upgrade a uh, single gang to a two gang uh, box so that'll be a nice addition because what we're going to have is some shelving along this wall here and uh, we want to be able to plug in um, a battery charger and uh, for like the drills into the so that that can sit on the shelf and then um, things like that so I just wanted more places to plug in instead of just this one this one outlet that we wouldn't so we wouldn't have to use like extra extension cords and power strips and all the extra stuff to go along with it all right so we got that out now we need to uh, remove this old box so let's go ahead and do that so these boxes actually have a small um, straight or slotted screw in there I'm just gonna back that off you can see it's it's already loose and, and coming out of there so the trick with these is to back it off and pull it out at the same time because that little ear will fall down and I missed my window of opportunity there you go so I was backing it off so you can see that this little metal ear just falls right back down so you'll you'll have a hard time getting that box out of there if you if you don't pull it out while you're unscrewing it I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these wires and again this is extra we're just gonna use these as a supply they didn't again didn't give me much wire to work with but well that's what we'll have to work with now we have our box cut out and we can go ahead and stab our our wires in here. It looks like this wire comes from this side over here. We got a little bit more wire. So what I'm going to try to do is is put it in the the hole that's closest to where it wants to come out of already. So I have just that little bit more wire to work with. So let's straighten those these hooks out right here a little bit like that because we're going to have to put pigtails on here so we can get around everything and these are just some Home Depot needle nose I, I have Klein needle nose too I just have them in the truck right now and I'm working in the house so I'm just going to take this this tab and kind of fatigue it a little bit so I can get this wire started since I don't have much to work with there you go now this guy here is nice and long so what I'll do is I'll just stick it over here in this corner and uh, that way it'll and I'm just gonna put a pre-bend in it so it kind of wants to shoot out so I can grab it and pull it the rest of the way through the box so I'll make sure we have plenty plenty in there there we go so again this is kind of short on the wire that was originally here but that's okay so here we go now we've got our new box installed in the wall our original wiring right there and our new wiring here so let's get the drill and the Phillips bit and then we can go ahead and tighten these wings up like we did on that single gang so we're just going to push it in there, make sure we're going forward, and, and again, don't over tighten it because it's just plastic. There we go. Just like that. And you saw the wall suck into the box, and that's, that's it. It's in. That's ready to go. So again, this, this wire here is extra. We're just going to tuck that in back here, kind of out of the way, hopefully. 
I think we'll have plenty of room in here to, to work with everything. There we go. That should give us room for our outlet and all the extra wire nuts to tuck in back here. So we've got our pigtails cut up here. Now I just need to strip them. These are already stripped and I kind of straightened them out with those needle nose there. So we're going to start with the grounds here. You can see I left, uh, they didn't leave me much to work with so I'm just going to have to use the box in the wall there to kind of help guide everything and give me enough because these wire nuts have these little extra skirts on them and they really don't you know, see how much it uses do the same thing see it's kind of tight in there that's why you always leave extra got our black pigtails here and uh, I'm going to take, see how I put a little bend in there so I can hold everything in one place. Go ahead and put these together. Got to put all of our hooks on here now. So here's our outlets. Again, same same outlets. Spec grade hubbles. These, uh, these are pretty good. The hubble's a good brand. Uh, of course, all of them have to meet certain requirements. Doesn't look like I have that that hook tight enough in the screw so I'm just going to take the the needle nose and kind of squeeze those down a little bit so again putting the hook in the direction that the screw is going so righty tighty and you want the hook hooking to the right so let's go ahead and hook up this ground too So the outlets are kind of dangling there together. And we've got a neutral. You want to hook that up. Just like that. And then let's go ahead and do this neutral. Neutral on the silver screw. Okay. Then uh, you want your black on the brass screw. We'll take all of our wire nuts, put them in way over there. This outlet seemed like it kind of wanted to hang out in that location. This outlet looks like it wants to hang out here. So I'm making sure that our bare copper grounds are not going to come in contact with any of the other terminals in the box or on the devices and then we want to take our drill again not running these up all the way because of the the painting that's going to be going on in here just like that oh we got to take these tabs off too don't we well, let's go ahead and get these started there we go so we got all those tabs off of there we're ready to paint behind everything and uh, put the cover plates on later. So next up we're going to work on the lighting. Uh, I'll show you what I did up there uh, for, the, for the new light we're going to install.